Hey, how are you guys? Good evening, teacher. Finally, we could get in. Try again. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Hi, thank you. And you? Fine, thank you. How was your vacation? Relax, only only at home, relaxing. Okay. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. How are you? Great, teacher. Thank you. And you? Good, good. Excellent. We, ha we have some problems with the app. I, I noticed, I, I, I tried to, I talked to Elena to try to fix it. Ah, okay, so I, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Neither did I, I was trying to figure it out. Okay, the important is that we, we are here. Okay. That's the important part, the important day, uh... Okay. So let's start off. We're gonna start off making sure that everything is okay and that everything was good over the weekend. So remember when we talk about our holiday, the last week, the last days, we're gonna talk about things using the past tense. The questions are going to be with the past tense. How do we have the questions? It's did, right? Did you? is the typical question for yes, no, right? So we say, did you? And then we need to use the verb in present, okay? Put it in the chat to make sure it's clear, okay? So as an example, go to the beach, okay? And if we have WH, it's gonna be WH plus the same things. So it's gonna be WH plus did, Plus, in this case, the, the person, right? The verb, present, and then complement. So in the chat, we can see the two different types of questions that we have. We have the yes, no questions like did, did you go to the beach, did you eat pupusas, so on. And then we can also see that we have the WH questions like what, where, when, and those are where did you go? Uh, what did you do? Who did you go with, right? Those are a little bit different questions. Um, is, it, is that okay, the difference between the two? Yes, it's okay. Okay, all right, everybody's so quiet, I wasn't sure. Okay, <laughs> perfect, perfect. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna make a few, uh, just a small groups, and we just wanna take a few minutes and we wanna talk about it, right? What's the idea? Simple, okay? We're just discussing about the last couple of days. So the last week, the things that we did, um, what did you do? Where did you go? Things like that, okay? okay. All right. Ask both type of question, WH and yes, no.
It is Luis, you guys okay? Okay. Maritza? I'm alone in the room. Ah, I see that, let me see. Okay, let me send you to another group. That way we can practice more. Jose, Luis, did you guys have any problems? Jose, did you have any problems joining the groups? Uh, I don't know, teacher, because I already here. I just entered here, teacher. Okay, let's try. Let me send you to another room just in case. Did you get the invitation to the other room? Lemar. Lemar, are you there? I'm good, Leymar. I'm wondering what happened with your with your audio. Are you having some problems with with the audio? Ah, okay, okay. You can't use it right now. Okay. No problem, Leymar. Okay, so then you can listen in to another group because everybody's talking about the things that they did. Okay, so listen to the, uh, the other members. Thank you. 
Okay, good, good. Everybody's back. Um, were there any words, anything that you wanted to ask your partner or you wanted to tell your partner and you don't remember the vocabulary? Yes. Contagiarse. What is it? Contagiarse. Contagiarse. Sí. Get infected. Get infected. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Cucharada, como se dice, teacher? Spoonful. Spoonful. A spoonful. Yeah. A spoon, the cuchara, and then full. Spoonful. Full de lleno. Yeah, spoonful. A spoonful. Ah, okay. That's right. Thank you. You're welcome. Adaptarse. To adapt. To adapt. Mm -hmm. Sabio. Wise. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Any other words? No. All right. Okay. Great. Teacher. Yes. Teacher. Um. Who uh, practice um practice for dialogue for the other person? More vocabulary. Oh, how often more vocabulary in English? Well, talk another person. Okay, Carlo, so uh, I'm not clear. What is the question? How often uh, more uh, vocabulary or talk to, to another person? Okay. Let me check to make sure. It's because the, your, your audio comes in and out. Okay. How, how often the vocabulary, the, the what, Carla? For talk to other person. Uh huh. I'm not. I'm. Who? Mm -hmm. Who? Uh, um. For more vocabulary, more words, more uh, expressions. Well, talk when talk for the another person. Uh huh. It's fluid. Is is to say in Spanish. Uh, Fluida la conversaciones. Okay, okay, Carla. So, so uh, Carla, uh, tell me, I, I think I'm getting a little confused. ¿Qué, qué es lo que quieres preguntar, Carla? ¿Cómo obtener un más eh, diálogo con otras personas? ¿Cómo obtener más vocabulario? Ah, eso es fácil, Carla. Eh, es, there's... Eh, the most important is that we practice and you write down the vocabulary. Right? Te voy a dar el ejemplo. Tengo alumnos que ellos a diario están aprendiendo 10 a 15 palabras. Eso significa que cada semana de, de lunes a viernes son 50 palabras. Son 200 palabras nuevas que ellos van aprendiendo. Entonces, simplemente es de tiempo y de dedicación. ¿Cuánto tiempo estás dispuesto? Y dependiendo del tiempo que estás dispuesto, eso es cuánto vas avanzando. Hay gente que no pueden aprender. Hay otros que ellos tienen tiempo, no, no hacen nada más no, no, que en realidad que estar aquí en clases y haciendo una que otra cosita. Entonces, tiene mucho tiempo. Entonces, la, la cuestión es que ¿de dónde estás sacando el vocabulario? ¿Estás viendo eh, expresiones, idiomas, eh, idioms, uh, las phrasal verbs? ¿La estás usando? ¿La estás escribiendo? ¿Estás buscando significado? Y imagínate todo lo que tienes que hacer solo con esas 10 palabras para que se te quede. ¿Y de dónde están sacando eso? Leyendo en inglés. ¿De dónde leen en inglés? Eh, empiezan con libros fáciles y gratis que están en, la, en, en línea. Entonces, por ejemplo, venga, reading A to Z. 
es un sitio web que es really need to see. Uh -huh. Es un sitio web que tiene miles y miles de libros para gente que va empezando desde kinder. Okay. Por ejemplo, que van aprendiendo I am a cat, I am happy, I am a dog, hasta ya avanzado de tipo bachillerato que están hablando de, eh, de la historia, del, eh, de lo que descubrimiento científico y todo. Entonces, simplemente es de buscarlo, leerlo, hacer el tiempo, usarlo. Eso, esa es la forma de tener el vocabulario, pero lo más importante, simplemente tener que usarlo. Y lo, cuando aprendes un vocabulario, por ejemplo, tenga un cuaderno aparte. Aquí tengo un montón de cuadernos. No le miento, cuadernos. Cuadernos, cuadernos, cuadernos. Y ahí voy con un montón de vocabulario. No le miento, ¿eh? para que no crean. Un montón de cuadernos. ¿Cuántos cuadernos tienen ustedes de vocabulario? De palabras nuevas, de actividades, de cosas. Entonces, simplemente es cuánto tiempo están dispuestos o tienen disponible para aprender. No todos tienen lo mismo, todos tienen diferentes actividades, familias y cosas. Pero esa es la mejor forma. Entre más vocabulario y cómo, aprendiéndolo naturalmente. ¿Cómo es naturalmente? En contexto, leyéndolo, viéndolo en la tele, cuando se esté utilizando para poder usarlo ustedes. ¿Ok? Y como siempre, ahí cualquier cosa, send in the chat, and we can help. Okay. Entonces, anybody else? Any other questions? No? Okay. Pero sí, en serio, es bueno tener un cuaderno aparte solo para vocabulario, porque se necesita, es como tener tu diccionario, tu diccionario personal, porque es el vocabulario que tú vas a usar, de tu profesión, de tu trabajo, de tu día a día, de lo cotidiano. Puedes agarrar cualquier diccionario, pero en realidad vas a usar todas las palabras que están ahí. No, ni en español. All right. So. Excellent, excellent question. Very good, it's important. It's important for everybody because everybody needs more vocabulary. You need more vocabulary for listening. You need more vocabulary for speaking. You need more vocabulary for writing. It's excellent question. The problem is ha, the work necessary for the vocabulary. That is the most difficult, okay? So I'm glad that everybody had a good vacation. We have some questions. And uh, now we're going to continue with our platform, okay? This week, we're going to finish Unit 5. This week, we finish Unit 5. The next week, finish the course, finish the exam, finish the evaluations, okay? So let me share with you a little bit. Here we have, okay, cross-culture experiences. We're going to watch the video and about all of the different places to remember, okay? Do you remember before the vacation, we talked about cross-cultural yeah. experiences? Okay, so in the vacation, many times in the vacation, you see people in El Puerto or in the different, in the volcano, volcano of Santa Ana or El Pital. You see many people from different countries. And we're going to see the different ideas, the different experiences that people have, okay? Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. Have you ever traveled to a country with a completely different culture? If you have, you probably know what culture shock is. It's a feeling of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You may even be a little bit afraid of making a mistake. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who've traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, 
Let's go to Brazil. Okay. So before we continue with the video, what country are they in in this moment? What country? Brazil. Brazil. Excellent. They're in Brazil, right? And what is the idea of cross culture? What is cross culture? In the beginning, the man explains all the cross culture. When someone moves to another country that he or she birthed. Okay, excellent, Marcel. So the idea from uh, things from the other country. So imagine, imagine you never, you never saw pupusas and they give you a pupusas. How do you eat? Revolt. With your hands. <laughs> no, no, not with your hands. <laughs> never, because you've never seen. This is only Salvadorian. So that's why this is cross culture. That when you go to the other culture and you see, you mimic, you copy how they do the things. This is the cross culture. That how the cultures interact. That's the idea. It's okay? Okay. Okay, so let's listen to Brazil. What happens in Brazil? Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name? Where are you from? My name is Camilla, and I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four, and I've lived here ever since. Two years ago, I went to Sweden, and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different, because here in Brazil, we kiss on the cheek, and they shake hands. So I went to kiss like, and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that. It was strange. This is Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru. Okay, so where is the girl originally from? Sweden. From Sweden. Sweden. That's right. And what is what is different between Brazil and Sweden? The way they greet each other. The way they greet each other. How do they greet each other in Sweden? They shake the hands. They shake hands. Like the Americans. Exactly. They shake hands. And in Brazil, how do they greet each other? They kiss the cheek. How many kisses? Two. Two, kisses. Two kisses. Two kisses. So for Salvadorians, this is very strange because Salvadorians, how many kisses? One. Only one. one. So if I give two kisses, it's like, hey, hey what happened? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and imagine, and we kiss. But even with two kisses, it's not normal. And sometimes in... in in another department in rural uh, areas, they don't give a kiss, they only uh, say hi. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe not for the pandemic, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe now it's normal everywhere, not only in the rural. <laughs> With elder, yeah. only they raise uh, their yes. hands. Ah, uh, that's true. That too. Some people only raise they they only raise their hands. Hello, and that's it. There's some. There's another custom. Uh huh. What's the other custom? Ah, uh, 
last week I went to to Cantón Ojo de Agua and some people uh, they say bendito it's like hi or buenas buenos días buenas tardes bendito especially yeah, with that's, that's with a, with another person who is older than yeah. you they all say bendito mm. Almost like Japanese people. Almost. Wow, wow, very strange. I never heard that. Okay. Good, it's good to know. Now let's see what happens in Lima, Peru. Interesting. Where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. What's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here, the bus system is private. And so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus. And sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is Denise Arregui here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. What happened with Andrew? What did he say? He talks about the public transportation. Uh-huh. Only the name, right? Because it's not public. It's private. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. It's <laughs> private. Uh-huh. And how is the public transportation different? Everybody's like fighting yeah. for the <laughs> they get into the hit their bus or something for the money. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's fighting for you to get on the bus. Ah, come on, come on, come on. They're, get in, get in. The last, the last. And then they try to get you on the bus. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, let's watch the last one. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. Hi, what's your name and where are you from? My name is Delfino Valdez, and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico, and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman, and she was making me lunch one day, and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day, with the beans, the rice, the meat. So needless to say, I was very surprised. This is Hillary Garcia in Tepoztlan, Mexico. Back to you, Chris. Until next time, this is Chris Brooks for Travel World, bidding you bon voyage. All right, what was the last one? Where, what were they talking about in the last one? About the food. About he was surprised with, the with his lunch. Some big song. Uh -huh. They eat a big meal. Yeah, in Mexico, they eat a big meal for lunch, right? Meat, rice, beans. Rice. Venezuela too. Meat. Mm -hmm. And he only had a, a sandwich and a, and a soup, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not normal for, for the people, right? This is the dessert. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's... For Latin America, it is not normal to have this type of lunch. And, and five tortillas. <laughs> yeah, and five tortillas. <laughs> if you notice, many Americans and Canadians have cold lunches or cold dinners. But in El Salvador, it is not normal to have cold food for dinner or for lunch. Right? Cold. Cold. Like what? For the food, for example, Subway, the Subway, uh, have to change the subs 
because in the United States, the clubs are not in, they're not hot. They don't exist hot. They only have. Oh, okay. So because in El Salvador, the people don't like cold food. They don't, mm -hmm. for example, the pasta in El Salvador, the people like the pasta hot. It's not mm -hmm. the people like the pasta cold. Yes. Or for example, if I give you beans, the beans in El Salvador, almost always the beans are hot. The people don't like the beans that are cold. Yes. Mm -hmm. But in the United States, they, they eat the cold pasta because it's a salad, no? No. Yeah, you can eat as a salad. You can have this. Is the, they have cold pasta and they have the cold pasta, the tuna, the tomato, and this is like a go green, and it's cold. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Mm hmm. Exactly. Mm hmm. Or, or uh, what is the the one from Spain? Um, carpaccio. Is that right? The cold soup. Yes. Yeah, it's a soup, but the soup is cold. It's not hot. Uh huh. In Salvador, only you say cold. I know. <laughs> and the people. No. When I, you know, for me, it was very strange to eat a soup with avocado, because we in, in Venezuela we eat uh, the avocado in salads and it, not in a soup. Never in a soup. No, but, never. Mm -hmm. okay. I know that in Brazil, uh, avocado is uh, dessert. Oh, it's eaten. It's eaten as a dessert. It's <laughs> like a fruit. <laughs> yeah, it's true. In some countries, the avocado is like the ice cream. They use avocado ice cream because it's a it's a fruit. So they have like mango, a mango uh, popsicle, or mango ice cream. But in the countries, they have avocado ice cream. Mm -hmm. It's very different. I know. I know. With my wife, we have a lot of things that we. With, we always like, I know, I, uh huh, <laughs> no problem, no problem, Natalie. Yes, it's usually a lot with the, the culture, the cleaning in El Salvador. The people clean a lot every day. The people like to clean the house, the, the sweep, uh, the, the dust, and, 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 and mop and things, the chores, the household chores. In the US, the household chores is once a week. Mm hmm. Even the way we the, the way people clean here in El Salvador is different from Venezuela. Uh huh. The same. I saw that too. I don't know. For me, it was the first time I see I saw a lady a cleaning lady here. I was like, why Why are you using the el spray spray? Yeah. Because we use a, a no sé cómo un, un balde. Come on. How, how bucket. do we say that? Bucket. A bucket. Uh -huh. We bucket. use a bucket with with the uh, water and uh, disinfectant, and we we get we put the inside the the, the bucket. Uh, no sé, el trapo y lo exprimimos y lo ponemos en el en el en el cómo se llama en el trapeador. Pero aquí hacen un spray en el piso y después pasan el trapeador. Me he fijado. Yo la primera vez que lo vi fue acá. Uh -huh. Yeah, me too. It's the first time I saw it too. Mm -hmm. But it's normal. It's normal for Salvadorians. The, the people don't know. They say, this is normal. But Yeah, even, even the, the drinks in a bag, the first time I saw it was here because I never saw that in Venezuela. Uh-huh, that's another. When you buy the soda in a bag. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Joined by a churrito. The churros. A soda with churros. <laughs> yeah, but I have never tried before a, a juice or a, 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 a water in a bag. I, the first time I saw that was here in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. or, or the idea for breakfast. This is the, the breakfast. Uh, uh, have you ever tried uh, a, a, French, a French fries with um, ice cream? Yes. Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> Common. French fries with ice cream. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's my wife, but I think it's I think it's in general Salvadorians how we prepare spaghetti. Because in the US, in, in my family, they, they we never prepare spaghetti like here in El Salvador. Here in El Salvador, everywhere, everywhere that I go, I see the spaghetti the same. They prepare the spaghetti and they prepare the sauce and they mix together. 
the spaghetti and the sauce in the you in in the yeah, other, you have the spaghetti right. right in the other you uh -huh. have the spaghetti and you have the sauce separate and you put the sauce you put it uh -huh, uh -huh. on the on the on the spaghetti that's right yeah not not mix mm -hmm. uh -huh. and that's my wife sense. my wife looked at me crazy when when i eat spaghetti <laughs> i have a yeah. spoon a spoon and the fork the spoon like for the soup and uh -huh. the And yeah, my, my, my husband too. <laughs> when, uh -huh. I, when I eat like that, he's why do you do that? We don't do mm. that. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> so we have, as you can see, we have a lot of cross culture. So with our partners, we want to get a few more ideas um, and just come up with some more ideas of cross culture. What are some other things that you see, okay? Or that you know of? It doesn't have to be with El Salvador, but just ideas. Okay, it can be any country, how they do things differently. It is. What happened? It is. Can you hear me? Hello, teacher. Hello, it is. I had a problem with my computer, I'm so sorry. No problem, it is no problem. Okay. Okay, did everybody come up with a few more ideas? We were talking about uh, some uh, countries where people uh, are not used to take a bath every day. Ah yes. Um, I I um, I went to Lithuania mm -hmm. many years ago, and I and I know uh, I met a guy, and he told me he asked me if I um, si tenía un tipo de enfermedad en la piel. I was like, what? Why? Because you take a bath every day. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> why not? And and they it, they say that it's more it's, it's too much uh, cold there and they don't need to take a bath every day, something it's, like that. It's true. It's true. I was near Canada and the same thing there. Not not everyone takes a shower every day. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The other is that the depend where you are the money for the water uh -huh. because sometimes it's too expensive and the water has to be shorter. Or the, mm -hmm. the time only five minutes. Additionally to that, some mm -hmm. people don't custom use the other end. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. It's true. They you they use perfume or they don't use anything. In Europe and Asia. And they need to use, they don't know that, but they need <laughs> to use it. 
but they need to use it. Right? They're like, ah, I know. And they're like, oh. mm -hmm. I, you know, I was in, 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 ¿cómo se llama? Francia, French, mm. French, how do you France? France. France. And it was the, this kind of huge bosses. And I was the, in the first place and the man was in the, <laughs> the last place of the boss. And I can, I can, uh, I could, uh, ¿cómo se llama? Oler su, su aroma desde el último hasta el primero. Ay, wow. Y wow. solo éramos nosotros dos. So, so you know, you know who it was. Mm -hmm. Denmark. Some people in Spain don't, uh, don't use the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same in El Salvador. I know many people in El Salvador, they don't use the other one. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't know if it has to be with culture or what, but usually it's the people that are, they work on the farms or in the country. They don't use deodorant. They just go to work in in in, in the farm or in the uh, with their crops, and that's it. They don't take a shower every day, too. Mm -hmm. the, the in the country is like 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 that. It's common, right? So every culture is a little yeah. bit different, but it's not. It's difficult to generalize because in each country have the people act differently in some places they act a lot in other places it's a little group of people okay we're going to continue we're going to be looking at the topic of how to describe these things okay these are the things that we use so we have noun phrases that's like what we're looking at here okay so when we talk about one thing i'd really miss or something i'd be nervous about or Whatever you're talking about, you can put your sentence and then you give your what it is. So let's take a look and see a little bit about this. Subject. And then we'll move into the object, probably the object. I'll separate this into a different lecture. So uh, in order to form this kind of um, expressions, first, we're going to have a subject. So in this case, this subject becomes one thing. Uh, then this is followed by a relative clause, I really miss. And then we're going to have the uh, verb to be. Uh, in this case, as you can see, is the verb to be is. And then that's followed by um, an object or a phrase, if you will. So let's write that specific sentence down, and then we're going to try to make sense of it, as I mentioned. So let me do that at this point. Okay. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, one thing, sorry, one thing becomes the subject of the sentence. I've, I've colored that in green so we can uh, see the difference between what's a verb and what's a, what's, a, uh, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb, and what's the object of this particular idea. Then this is... So you see, it's easy with the colors, it's easy to understand. The subject, one thing, something, the people, whatever, right? The relative clause is your opinion. I'd really miss, um, I'd be nervous about, I hate, I would email, that, that part, the relative clause. Then always the verb to be, okay? You can see here we use is, is or are, depending if it's singular or plural, and then the object, what it is that you're talking about, okay? So if you go to another country, what do you remember about El Salvador? Or what do you think would be different? Ah, that's when we use this. One thing I really miss is uh, upusas, or uh, one thing I really miss is going to the beach on Saturdays. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Yes, teacher. Okay, let's listen a little more and get some more examples. It's followed by the relative clause. I, I colored this in blue so you can see what, what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now, the verb to be needs to match with the subject, if you will. So if the subject uh, were to be plural, then this should change to are. Um, and then it's followed by the object of the sentence. So in this case, my mom's cooking is the object of the sentence. What we're going to do right now is we're going to include a lot of uh, relative clauses uh, so that you can see that uh, this topic could it can become a little bit confusing. But if we understand... Uh, this structure, it, it shouldn't be difficult to complete. So
So let me include um, lots of relative clauses, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to try to make sense of it, but we're going to try to uh, make different sentences with them, all right? So. so I think this is the easier part because you can see all of the expressions you can use as the relative clause, right? Is I would really miss i would be nervous about the pronunciation of i would in contraction is i'd i'd be nervous about i'd be anxious about if you see these are your emotions how you feel right so if i go to a new restaurant one thing i'd try or one thing i'd order is a new food or his new food, for example. That's how we use the relative clauses. Okay, so you can see all of them is the same idea, right? We're all talking about, let me get, let's go a little bit back and then we can get it. And maybe for me is getting lost, right? Uh, let me try to keep the format a little bit because I want you to notice that we have one thing is the noun, uh, the relative clauses I'll be nervous about. Then this is followed by the verb to be. And then this will be followed by the object of the sentence. Okay, so for me, one thing I really be nervous about, or one thing I'll be nervous about is getting lost. One thing I'll be anxious about is you see, whenever you talk about something, maybe going to another country, a new situation, a new job, what is the, what do you expect? Ah, oh, one thing I expect, one thing I'd uh, be anxious about is uh, meeting new customers, or one thing I'd be enthusiastic about is learning another language. That's how we use it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. I think the structure is pretty easy. And then it's the same idea. You can use this as the objects, right? Um, the videos are pretty long. So here we can take the same thing and only change it. We put the reverse. We put my mom's cooking okay. a lot of is, we go backwards. My mom's cooking is one thing I'd really miss, for example. Or the next one right here, right? Okay, we say making new friends is, and then we go again, something I'd be nervous about. So we can have the two forms at the beginning or at the end. It's no difference, it's the same meaning. If you need a little bit more help, I recommend watch the entire video because the videos are really long. That's why we're not going to watch them. If you see this video is six minutes and 38 seconds, and this video is the same, about six minutes of hang on, six minutes and 30 seconds. So the best is the best is if you need more or if you want to see more exactly, watch the video because the videos are very long, like I say, maybe 13 minutes. And I think for 13 minutes we can use the time practicing speaking or other exercises. Okay. Okay. So before we finish. Um, are there any questions, anything that uh, is not clear? Don't worry, we're going to practice some more tomorrow, right? We're going to practice using them tomorrow, but the idea is to make sure that today we get, we talk a little bit, we learn about each other and the vacation and all of the ideas of the cross culture. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, teacher. Perfect, perfect. And did everybody finish the unit four in the platform? Nobody, nobody is, ay, no, no, me falta la unidad tres, me falta la dos, no hice el examen. Everybody is complete? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. That's it. The best of the best. I have the best group. That's why I don't worry. That's why they say, hey, no problem. I say, yeah, my students. They are responsible. Aunque sea el último día, pero lo van a tener antes de clase. All right.
right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Sorry for the problems at the beginning, but I think we fixed the problem for the link. And tomorrow it should be everybody should be able to access without any problems. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys. Have a great night and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks to you. See you. Bye. Bye. Take care.